welcome to Snow Desk, the show from the snow here in Grand Teton National Park. Thanks for tuning in. Remember today that if you are watching from home and you take any photos or in your classroom take any pictures to hashtag SnowDesk2021 and post on our Facebook page um, in the comments. And if you have questions throughout our broadcast, we will have an opportunity to answer those at the end and you can put your questions in the Facebook comments of the post talking about SnowDesk. My name is Ranger Elizabeth. And I'm Ranger Doria. And keep an eye out for Field Ranger Olivia, who will be doing some funny things in the background, so be sure not to miss her. All right, so we're coming to you live from the town of Moose in Grand Teton National Park, which is located in the state of Wyoming in the northwest corner. I wonder if anybody that's watching has been here before. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, whether or not you have, we're glad you get to tune in by visiting virtually today. Yeah, and it's pretty wintry out here today. As you can see, we are sitting at desk made out of snow, four feet of snow to be exact. Whoa. And this year we had to build the desk a little differently to practice social distancing. Um, and it was also different because we had a different amount of snow here when we built the desk. Um, this winter, when we built the desk in early February, we had about 135 inches of snow on the ground. But last January alone, we got 169 inches. So um, winter can change from time to time and year to year here. And I wonder if everyone at home can think about what their weather is like and how that's different from where we are. Mm -hmm. I bet some of them are snowy like us, mm -hmm. but maybe some, some of them, of them are sunny. sunny and warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So Grand Teton National Park is one of many special places in the United States that have been set aside to be protected forever. They've been set aside because they tell the story of all Americans and they're important to people all around the world. These special places like the Statue of Liberty or the Grand Canyon or Harriet Tubman National Historic Park. Lots of amazing things to explore and discover and learn. And these beautiful places will always be here for you to come and visit. But until then, we're broadcasting to you live from Snow Desk. Yeah. Grand Teton was set aside to protect the beautiful mountains and variety of wildlife. We have lots of big and small animals. And in order to live here, they have to figure out a way to survive winter. So what is winter like for everything that lives here in Grand Teton National Park? Well, it's pretty dark here. The days are short um, and there's not a ton of sunlight. And it's really windy and there's lots of snow blowing around us right now. Speaking of snow, food's hard to find because it's covered in snow. An average snowfall is over 400 inches. That's like the height of a three-story building. Wow. So imagine a house or your school and imagine if it's a one-story building, imagine three of those buildings stacked on top of each other three times. Yeah. It's a lot of snow. A lot of snow. And it's cold here. It's been as cold as negative 63 degrees out. So if you think about the inside of your freezer, it's about zero degrees. So our coldest day, on that day, your freezer was 63 degrees warmer. Warmer? <laughs> wow. <Ugh. laughs> And winters are long too. They can last six months, seven months, eight months long. It's over half the year. It's exhausting. I can't even remember summer. I wonder if anyone watching would want to move here. Do we have any brave souls out there? Maybe. I want to move here. Wait, yeah, I already we here. did. Yeah. <laughs> we love it. Now there are some animals who aren't prepared to deal with such hard winters, so they deal with it in different ways. Animals like bears sleep throughout the winter. Hmm. What's that called Ooh. when an animal sleeps throughout the winter? Mm. Do you remember? Yeah, it's called migrate. No, no, no. Oh, hibernate. The other one. Hibernate. Right. Nice. Hibernate. Yeah, so they sleep throughout the... Oh, and Ranger Olivia's hibernating behind us. Oh. Other animals like the pronghorn antelope migrate. That's where they move from, from place to place oh, depending yes. on the season. Yes, they migrate. There she goes, migrating away. Bye. <laughs> so there's lots of animals who live in Grand Teton that hibernate and migrate, but we're not going to talk about those animals today. For Snow Desk today, we're going to talk about the animals who stick it out awake all winter long here in Grand Teton National Park. So what's life like for them? I like to compare that life in the winter to that of an Olympic snowshoe race. So during a snowshoe race, Athletes have to deal with the wind and the cold and the snow. And not only are you battling 
the winner, but you are competing against other racers. Animals have to survive the cold and the snow while competing for food, water, and shelter. And to win a race, you must be prepared. You must be strong and determined to win. And winning a gold medal is like surviving winter. Woo! You did it! Good you job, won! Oh, Give her a round of applause. Nice job. Awesome. But unlike Ranger Olivia, athletes, they can go home at the end of the day, but the animals, they have to stay outside and tough it out. So how does anything or anyone possibly survive winter here? How do they do that? They Is there any hope for survival? Hmm. Oh, they have a great idea. They change. Yep. Oh. So snow and cold change the way all things survive. The animals of Grand Teton make changes in order to survive winter here in this one of the harshest climates of the world. And those changes we like to call adaptations. And animals survive the long winters by changing in three different ways. We have some hand motions we'd like you to do with us. So they change how they look, they change where they live, and they change what they eat. So we can do that again together. They change how they look, they change where they live, and they change what they eat. So how does an animal change the way it looks? It might be easier than you might think. So I wonder how many of our viewers put on a coat to go outside Ooh. this morning? Mm, I bet a lot of them do. Yeah. How many coats are you wearing? Uh, I have three coats. Uh, me too. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So even people change how they look from season to season. And sometimes the best way for an animal to change and um, to get ready for winter is to put on a big warm winter coat. And bison are a great example of this. To prepare for the long cold winters, they grow an extra thick warm winter coat. Like Ranger Olivia back Ooh. here. Oh, so that warm. looks cozy. That looks really warm. Nice. Wow. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. Yeah, I wish I was as warm as a bison right now. Yeah. <laughs> Another animal that changes how it looks is the bull moose. So those are the boy moose. So they've got these big, heavy antlers on their heads that can weigh as much as 50 pounds. That's a lot to carry around. And just before the winter every year, they actually take the, they drop those antlers wow. off their heads and they shed them. What? So, whoa, Ranger Olivia, Bull moose shed their antlers in the winter, so you could just get rid of that. Really? Yeah. Oh. Is that easier? Yeah. Save some energy. Nice. Good job. <laughs> All right. Um, another animal that we want to talk to you about is the weasel. And so we want to talk to you about the weasel by taking a look at a, two different furs. And I want you to take a look at those furs and think about what you notice is the same with those furs. Just take a moment and you might be noticing that they have the same shape. So both of them have a little bit of white on them. They both have tails. Now think about what's different between those two furs. Hmm. One seems a little bigger than the other. One's a little fuzzier than the other. Ooh. Oh, go ahead. What oh no, what were you going to say? Oh. I was just thinking that they're different colors. Oh, interesting. So I wonder why some weasels are brown and some are mm. white. I wonder if it has to do with the, the time of the year. Oh, you mean like we're sitting at this desk of snow uh huh, and it's all white, kind of like that white colored weasel. Mm -hmm. Let's show them a picture of what snow desk looks like in the summertime. So thinking about those two weasel furs that you saw, I wonder which color is going to help it blend into the, into the mm. summertime snow desk surroundings. Would it be the brown one or the white one? What mm. do you think, Ranger Elizabeth? I'm going to go with the brown one. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah it's going to help it blend in. Hey, what's that called when an animal's color helps it blend in to, to the surroundings so it can hide? Ooh, ooh, I wonder if our students at home know. Cam Maybe they can shout it out Cam and we can hear them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Cam. Cam Camouflage. 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 Ding, ding, ding. Yes. Nice. All right. Good. So that brown one's going to help them be camouflage in the summer here. So then thinking about those furs again, brown or white, which one's going to help it camouflage in the winter at Snow Desk? Hmm. hmm. 
the brown was in the summertime. Then. So, well, the white is all around us. So probably the white one. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see in the picture here that the weasel, when it's white colored, it helps blend into its surroundings to help it hide from those predators that are trying to eat it. Yeah, so that's, a, I think that's a cool adaptation that an animal can change the color of its fur. All right, so we learned about how three different ways an animal can change the way it looks to survive here in the winter. So if you were here and you're an animal here in Grand Teton National Park, which adaptation would you want to have? Would you want to grow a warm coat? Go ahead and hug yourself like you're wearing a warm bison coat. If you want to shed your antlers, you could show us your moose antlers, but drop one. And if you want to camouflage, you can go ahead and hide, pretend like you're hiding behind some branches. So which one do you want to be? Ready, set, vote. Oh, it looks like Elizabeth wants to camouflage. Oh yeah, that'd be such a cool superpower. I think so too. All right, nice. Awesome. I'm curious how many of our students have had to move in their lifetime. Doria, have you had to move? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I've moved a lot. Yeah, me too. Um, and you pack everything up and go somewhere new where things are not familiar to you. And in the winter, our animals here in Grand Teton have to do just that because their neighborhoods just got really snowy and cold. And for these animals, it's all about location, location, location. Ooh. Uh, what are you uh, What are you doing? Uh, on vacation. What? Oh! I didn't say vacation. I said location. Oh. oh no, I'm sorry. Okay. It would be really fun to go on a vacation somewhere warm and tropical. That sounds really nice. But today we're talking about the animals that stay here throughout Grand Teton and find ways to survive in the winter and they change where they live. They have two options. They can live on top of the snow, like Ranger Olivia back there. Hi, Olivia. Or they can choose to live underneath the snow. Oh, where did she, she go? She was just there. Did I just saw her. see her? That's so weird. Olivia? Huh, well that's, okay. Well, oh well. Oh well. We gotta so, keep going with the show. <laughs> so I'm curious. Um, if our friends out watching can think of some reasons why animals might choose to live underneath the snow. Hmm. Mm. Oh. What are the benefits of living underneath the snow? Dory, do you have any ideas? Well, I was thinking about how the weasel was trying to camouflage to stay away from the yeah. predators. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you go under the snow, it's going to help you hide from the Ooh. predators too. Ooh, yeah. And I wonder if you're hiding from predators, if you're also hiding from like winds and snowstorms. Oh yeah. And like really cold temperatures. Yeah. yeah I bet it'd be warmer, like it's a big blanket covering yeah, everything. Yeah, big blanket. Yeah. And there's a lot of food down there. We've got roots and bulbs and other insects and little animals that live down there. So there's a lot of positive reasons for animals to live underneath the snow. Um, animals like the pocket gopher. Pocket gopher? Yeah, the pocket gopher. Well, they... Oh, there's Olivia. Oh, <laughs> she's in a pocket gopher. She was under the oh, snow. Digging tunnels. <laughs> yeah, so pocket gophers, they spend their winters underneath the snow digging tunnels. And they do this to stay warm um, while they live underneath the snow. So class out there, we're going to do the pocket gopher shuffle. And we'll see if we get a little bit warmer. So go ahead and move your arms back and forth like you're running in place. Ooh, okay, faster. Faster. Oh. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, I am. Whew, I need to take off some of my layers. I'm definitely warmer now. Whew. But wait, you're talking about the animals that live under the snow, mm -hmm. but not all animals are small enough to live under the snow, right? That's right. Yeah, so some animals have to live on top of the snow because they're just too big. And that comes with its own set of challenges. Um, sometimes the snow can be as deep as you are tall, which is a lot of snow. And one animal that lives on top of the snow really well is the lynx. So you can see in this photo here that the lynx paws look pretty big and they're able to walk on top of the snow like they have snowshoes on. So students, we're going to demonstrate this. Go ahead and take your hand out in front of you and squeeze your fingers together tighter, as tight as they go. Nice. And this is the size of the lynx paw in the summertime. 
Now, as winter comes, snow starts falling, the lynx actually grows fur in between its fingers. So go ahead and open up your fingers as wide as possible, stretch them. Woo! Nice. So that's the size of the lynx paw in the winter time. They grow it so much bigger, so that way they can stay on top of the snow. And it's like they have four snowshoes on or something. Uh, Ranger Olivia, you have four snowshoes on? Yeah. Is that helping you stay on top of the snow? For sure. Oh, wow. She looks just like a lynx. So silly. So people do this too, you know. We um, put on snowshoes and skis um, and snowboards to help us stay on top of the snow. Can you imagine if we didn't? We might get stuck. Olivia! Oh no! What are you doing? She's stuck in the snow. Why'd you take your snowshoes off? Oh man. You should go put those back on. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay, good. Silly. Okay. So we had talked about how animals change where they live and they're adapted to life under the snow or above the snow. And what I'd like you to do is decide if you were an animal here in Grand Teton of the winter, would you rather live under the snow or on top? And you can vote. If you would like to live under the snow, go ahead and do the pocket go for shuffle. And if you want to live on top of the snow, you can show us your lynx paw. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, oh we're both pocket going. Well, I want to have a lynx paw too. Okay. <laughs> can we do both? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you found a, a way to live with all this snow, but now it's time to get food. Why not just run to the grocery store? That sounds great, right? But what if you get there and the shelves are empty and dusty and bare and there's no food in sight? Well, that's sort of like what winter is for many of the animals here. Bare shelves, no easy food. So if there's no easy food to find, you're going to have to change what you eat. So in the summer, moose have all sorts of delicious and nutritious green things to eat, like yummy leaves. But in the winter, the green leaves are all gone and all that's left are dry tree branches. So they have to make a change. Hmm, let's see if we can tie this back to some human foods, like maybe some breakfast foods. What are, what are some of your favorite foods for breakfast? Mm, I love um, berries and yogurt, and sometimes I put berries in cereal. Hmm. I wonder what the audience's favorite mm. foods for breakfast are. Yeah. Maybe pancakes. Ooh, bacon. Ooh, and or eggs. waffles. Yeah. Mm. Well, we've got Ranger Olivia here. She really likes cereal. Ooh. So imagine you're eating your favorite breakfast food all winter or all summer long, but then winter comes and all your food runs out. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh no. Ranger Olivia, what are you gonna do? Oh, oh. Wait, don't eat the box. Oh. No. Oh, no. That's, that's not nutritious. So sad. Oh, well, oh. that's kind of like what the moose have to do in the winter to survive. They eat the dry tree branches without their favorite green leaves, and that's a hard change to make. Believe it or not, though, there are some animals that love the winter, like the wolverine. In the winter, wolverines feast on frozen dead animals buried in the snow. And they can actually smell and dig up a frozen dead animal that's buried seven feet deep in the, sh in the snow. What? Could you smell something that's seven feet deep in the no snow? No way. No, we don't have very good sniffers. Mm -hmm. Well, snow is like nature's freezer. So, ooh, what, what are some of your favorite snacks from ooh. the freezer? Ooh, ice cream sandwiches. Ooh, that sounds good. Tater tots? Ice cream in general. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, if you're a Wolverine, your favorite snack might be a frozen bighorn sheep leg. Oh, the bighorn sheepsicle. Oh, that's weird. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm good. No, I, I don't really like eating legs like that. Thanks, Just so. out of a cooler. That's weird. <laughs> Maybe um, they should make an ice cream flavor. Ugh. I don't no? No sheepsicle? Okay. Well, some animals, like the pika, know that winter's coming, so they plan ahead. So pikas are a small relative of the rabbit with big ears that live high in the mountains. They're awake all winter long. They're about the size of a hamster, but they don't hibernate at all. Um, so what they do is they work hard in the summer so they can eat their same favorite foods all year round. 
So in the summer, they're eating flowers and grasses, and they're like, oh, it's delicious. Is it delicious? Yeah. <laughs> but wait, winter's coming. What are you going to do? Oh, well, I guess I'll save them in my backpack. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Saving them in your backpack, saving them for later. That's exactly what the pikas do. Now, viewers, can you imagine that the pika, again, it's about the size of a hamster, it collects enough grasses and flowers to make what they call a haystack that's as big as snow disc. It's up to four feet what? tall. That's Whoa. a lot of hard work for the pika. Winter warrior for sure. Okay, so now we know how some animals change what they eat in order to survive the winter here. Now I want you to think to yourself, would you rather be a moose, a pika, or a wolverine? and for the winter time. So if you want to be a moose, you could show us your moose antlers. If you want to be a wolverine, you can dig in the snow like you're looking for sheep sickles. And if you want to be a pika, you can show us big pika ears. Looks like Elizabeth wants to be a pika. Oh yeah. I think I want to be a wolverine. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, so today we've discovered some major changes or adaptations that animals make in order to survive the winter here in Grand Teton National Park. They change the way they look, they change where they live, and they change what they eat. And although changes, like seasonal changes, happen here all the time, park rangers try to prevent this place from changing too much. And we don't want these, we want these special places to be here forever. So I'm curious if our viewers out there can think of some ways that humans are causing changes that might be dangerous or harmful for the animals of Grand Teton. Hmm. 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 Doria, can you think of any changes that humans might be making? Well, that could be harmful. Sometimes um, I see trash on the ground that's not supposed to be there, but then I pick it up. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so littering can be pretty harmful to the animals here. Feeding animals can be harmful to them mm -hmm. if they That's get not healthy for food. Them. That can be an issue. Oh, um, cutting down trees to build buildings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so cutting down trees or um, ruining the habitat that the animals live in. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways that we can be harming the animals here, and protecting national parks is a really big job. And as as park rangers, we work hard to protect these places, but sometimes our work just isn't enough and we think it's up to the owners of national parks to help. So I'm hoping all of our viewers out there can point to somebody who they think owns national parks. Hmm. Okay, well no matter where you're pointing, I want you to put your thumb up and point it back at yourself and point it to somebody else in your room and point it at the screen. Everyone that you're pointing to owns national parks. We they do? Yeah. They belong wow. to each and every one of us. Um, and they belong to your family, your friends, your teachers. They even belong to future generations, which means that they belong to your future kids, your future grandkids, and your future great-grandkids. Wow. They belong to everyone, which means it's up to all of us to protect them. That's neat. We challenge you and your teacher to talk more about national parks out near you and around the country. Um, parks like Brown versus Board of Education, National Historic Site, um, Harriet Truman National Historic Park, Fort Vancouver National Historic Site, and New Orleans Jazz National Historic Park. Take a virtual field trip, learn, explore, become a junior ranger, and find your park. Because in the words of the Lorax, unless, unless someone, someone like, like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. better. It's, it's not. not. We hope you care a whole awful lot about Grand Teton and other national parks um, near you. And we're so glad you all tuned in to join us today at our very snowy snow desk. Um, we're gonna monitor our Facebook page and see if there's any questions that came through that we can answer for you. So again, if you were watching today um, and you have pictures of your class or of your students at home virtually learning with us, feel free to take a picture and post it to our Facebook page and hashtag Snow Desk 2021. Um, and again, we'll be monitoring that Facebook comments for any questions you have for us.
All Ooh, right. What's so your favorite animal in the park? Yeah, our favorite animals. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna go with the owl. Okay. <laughs> nice. Good choice. I really like the owls because they have these special um, fringes on their feathers. They're like little eyelashes on the ends of their feathers that help break up the air. So it's a lot quieter when they're hunting at night so they can sneak up on their prey. So if you're at home, you can take your hand and make it small like this with your fingers together and try and wave it next to your ear to see if you can hear the air. Can you hear the air next to your ear? Okay. Now take your hand and open it wide and do it again. And you'll notice that it's quieter because you're not making as much noise with your hand because it's breaking up the air with the fingers. And that's what the, the owl feathers do. And I just think that's so Pretty cool. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think my favorite animal in the park is the lynx, which we actually have a fur of. Got a little snowy while we were talking to all of you. But the lynx we talked about, and I think it's so cool how their paws get so big in the winter for them to stay on top and they just look really nice and cozy and warm. Um, and if I were an animal, I would want to warm, like grow a nice cozy warm coat like this. Mm -hmm. They're so cool. Oh, Ooh. so the question is, how did you become a ranger? Well, do you want to answer that one first? Sure. So when I was in college, I studied geology and out of college, once I graduated, my first job was working for the National Park Service in Glacier National Park in Montana. And I worked as a geology intern, um, teaching people about the rocks of the park. And then from there, I just kept working in other parks. I worked in Yosemite National Park and now in Grand Teton National Park. Okay. When I went to college, I started off as a business major and then I stumbled across this advertisement that said, oh, you can have a job where you can go hiking with people and teach them about nature. And I was like, that sounds so cool. I've never heard of that before. And so I interviewed for the job, but I didn't get it because I didn't really know anything because I wasn't really an outdoors person at that mm. point. But then now that I knew this whole world existed, I was like, oh, that's really cool. So I started hiking and I started doing more classes in, in science. And I eventually got a job as a park ranger. Awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. That's really cool. That's awesome that you were able to look at something and be shut down kind of and then uh, think about how you wanted to work to have the right skills for that. Mm -hmm. That's a really good lesson to learn. Kept going toward that goal. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, okay. The question is, how did we build snow desk? So snow desk this year, <laughs> we had to pile the snow into two large humps and we take snowshoes and stomp down on it to compact the snow. Then we pour water on it to help con compact the snow a little bit more. And then we let it sit for a day and we, we roughly carve it into the shape of a desk. And then we come back the next day with a saw and we cut the sides of it, cut the front of it, and we make these benches back here as well so we can sit on it. And we're actually, we're sitting on benches of snow uh, behind the desks as well. It's a lot of work. And there's a really awesome uh, video of the snow desk building time lapse on YouTube. And I encourage you to browse through our page and find that. Oh, we could play okay, it right we now. We play it for you. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of Snow Desk. Um, we hope you enjoyed and maybe learned a thing or two. It was a lot of fun to connect with you all. Thanks so much for coming. Have a lovely day. Bye.